Hey everybody, welcome to Welker Farms. My name is Nick Welker and uh, today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe. But let's talk about some tractors. This tractor in particular, as you can see, is still split in half. Nothing here is connecting the two halves together. We got all the spherical bushings out. We got all the new ones. They're pretty much ready to go in, but we have just been hit by sickness after sickness after sickness on this farm. I am on the tail end of it. I still have some stuff going on that's frustrating, but it's slowly working its way out of my body. Um, but my brother has been just sick. Leg arms have been really sick. And he wants me to hold off on doing this until he's here, understandably so, because, uh, well, he'll make sure it's done right. So this is on hold. That's okay though, we'll get to it. And when we get to it, you guys will know. So uh, I have the whole shop to myself today. I'm the only one over here. It's uh, windier than windy outside. And I'm trying to figure out what could I possibly do with my time in this shop. So I was thinking, well, we do have another tractor that you guys haven't seen in a while, and it's back. And I did buy something for it. So let's, uh, let's go work on that. So as you can see, it needs a facelift. And I, I got the kit, it's supposedly for these cabs, so we'll see how many pieces are in there that I need. But I'll just start ripping in there and see if I can replace, put the new stuff in, make it look a little nicer. And then the next step, will be a nice paint job with that thing. All right, let's start with the door. Um, some of these pieces aren't in terrible condition, like this piece. And why replace it? Well, kit comes the new one and uh, you might as well just do them all. So I'm gonna be pulling some of these out that probably don't need to be replaced, but it'll look better if it's all uniform and new looking. So I'll start pulling the handle off. I've got it mostly buttoned up. Let's take a peek. Fresh paint, a little bit of fresh paint. That's new. And then I had to make this bracket here because, well, we didn't have any more plastic and it would have ripped that out if I didn't have that. All that's new, all behind there, this whole piece, and then right there. Now the problem I'm running into is because this console's all, well, seen better days. It's broke. There's no place for this to anchor to. So I'm gonna have to come up with something. Really what we need is a whole new piece that goes across the whole face of all these controls here. Uh, or I custom make one, which would take a lot of time plasming that out and making it look half decent. But uh, yeah, we'll see. So that's my next step is to figure that out. And then I just gotta wipe the cab down a little bit. But anyways, yeah, it's, um, it looks a lot nicer in here. Oh yeah, I forgot the, the kickboard or the firewall piece down there is new as well. So. Just gotta do some of this headliner and uh, this tractor's value just went up about 200 bucks. What is that? What do you have there? Why do you have a picture of my head? What are you doing with that? <laughs> you silly. What are you guys giggling about? Okay, more Doritos, come on. Hey, not you, Levi. Oh no. More Doritos. There's that shaft again from that winch. See that? Yeah. Anyways, today's video sponsor, Simply Safe. It's the holiday season, and it's been no better time than now to get yourself a Simply Safe system in one of these cute little boxes for 40% off or more. Simply Safe is a home security system that you can go online and order, and it'll ship in a box right to your doorstep with stuff like this. Customize what you want, pick which sensors you want for how many rooms, how many windows, whatever options you need 
they probably got it. Now what's great about Simply Safe is you can install it and cut out the expense of installation. One new feature from Simply Safe is this wireless outdoor security camera. 1080p, 140 degree wide angle view, plus night vision, and two-way audio communication. So if you need, you can speak through the mic on this and your phone. As you can see, I've got the app up here running. So live footage from the camera. Isn't that cool? Now Simply Safe even works in a shop like this. I'll show you. Carbon monoxide detector because well, in a shop, you've got internal combustion engines running and carbon monoxide is not good for your lungs. So that's a good thing to have in the shop. Temperature sensor for your plumbing areas, just in case you get a hard freeze in the winter and for some reason your furnace isn't working, it won't destroy this because you'll get notified. Hopefully get a heater in this room to warm it up in time. You've got door sensors in every door in the shop. That way you'll know when someone comes in or out. And I can you know when the leg arm shows up for work so I can act like I'm working when he comes in the door. And of course, the high point in your shop, you gotta have your smoke detector. And that is the one thing definitely want in our shop. Don't want a fire. And if there is a fire, we want to be able to get it out as soon as possible because we've got a lot of expensive stuff in here that we don't want burnt up. And I recommend a couple motion sensors around too, just a little extra added insurance. So that way if something's moving around in your building that should be there, you'll know. And for water sensitive things such as electronics like this NAS up here, they do have a sensor that'll detect flooding in the event of a water break or something that happens in your house. So that's nice too. Now with just one tap on your phone, this wireless deadbolt can lock or unlock your door. This is your base station. It's the brains of the operation. It's what talks to your Wi-Fi and cellular network. Power goes out, still battery inside. So that way it still has a chance to notify authorities. If for some reason alarm is triggered, everything has batteries. So power is not an issue. Now when it comes time to leave and arm the system, just pull out your keypad or your phone and the app and press the away button and you'll speak to you in a really polite voice. Please exit now. And when you're back. Alarm off. There we go. Simply Safe has been awarded and recommended by experts such as Popular Science, PC Mag, and over 3 million users use Simply Safe to keep their place safe. Now, before it's too late, go to simplysafe.com slash Farms to take advantage of this awesome holiday sale of up to 40% off a new system. You pick out what you want, you get it sent to your door, you can install it, and then you can rest assured that your place is being protected and then you're safe. Sounds good? Let's get to it. It's a tad bit windy out here. Anyways, we're over here at the Quonset and we're making things happen. They're making things happen, not me. They're making things happen. This guy was here last year and he poured, you poured three bins for us last year, didn't you? Yeah. And well, another pad too. Yeah. So three pins and a pad he poured for us and then he's got a fourth one. What else should we have you do? Underground uh, bunker? What's that? Underground bunker? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, the concrete truck is here and uh, they're gonna get ready to pour some concrete. The concrete truck is having an electrical issue, we believe. We can't lift the chute up and down, so make and do. But they're pouring the outside, as you can tell, and then they'll probably start pouring the inside and I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say what they're doing because I probably don't even know what they're doing. They're just doing something special is all I know. But anyways, looking good. Take a little drive. I want to go see uh, some of that uh, drain bin pad plus the underground line that's buried that's going to my future house because uh, I wasn't there and I'll explain that why in a second. So I'm driving along where I dug that trench that like three quarters of a mile, 40 some hundred feet, and it is buried. And I wasn't able to come out that day because I felt terrible, absolutely terrible. And we've just been fighting sickness like crazy this last month. I've been sick for about a month straight. If you guys have wondered why content's been slow, we've just been sick. 
but when I was sick, they came out here and they brought the grader. My dad and my brother, they're awesome. They, uh, my dad walked the entire trench, cleaned it up, and they laid uh, the tape down that notifies you if you're digging into an underground power line, and then leg arms ran the grader, and he buried just about all of it. But looks like he didn't quite finish at 100%. So I can see here, he left the gas line still exposed, so um, I'll have to go in with there with a shovel and kind of bury up in that, bring the grader and finish that up. And then all this down here needs another pass the grader looks like, but still, that was nice of him to do that when I wasn't around. Spring broke on that meridian lid there and uh, the wind blows it open every time. I think we need to turn the lids sideways a little bit so it doesn't catch the brunt of that wind, but gonna need a new spring on that thing. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep popping open. I also wanted to explain something real quick with that Bob's Big Bud bin boom. Um, a number of you have said, well, maybe the winch failed because the weight of that bin is just hanging on that cable and it's probably causing spikes in tension that exceeds the pounds that that winch is able to lift with the bin shaking on there. <clears throat> we do have a chain at the top that when we lift the bin all the way up, we actually hook it and then lower the bin down just a little bit so that the weight then is on the chain and not on the cable that goes to the winch. This last time though was such a short trip that we didn't do that. But here, here's what we think happened. The winch, I think, got damaged. Uh, we took that winch off the big bud, actually up to that lake house property that I have, and we used it on our skid steer to winch an old boathouse out of the water up the shore, and we abused it. We worked it pretty hard, winching and yanking and pulling to rip that boathouse apart that was in the water because it was on a really steep grade. It was tough to do, so it worked great. But I think we might have damaged it there, and then we brought it back and went to do this and we already set it up. And as a lot of you have said too, you're right, that's really not the proper thing to be lifting a bin with. It is a, it is a strong winch, but so. But look what I'm on, another bin pad. This is a future 36 foot wide, nine ring tall, about 30,000 bushel bin, just like this one. It won't have a ladder on it, but uh, that one's got it, so they'll join together. They had some issues with getting this thing cleaned up. Um, too much additive was added to the concrete mix and it caused it to not cure as fast as they needed so they weren't able to get their power trail on here at the time but it's honestly going to be fine um it feels pretty solid it's holding my weight i'm sure it'll hold a bit on it and that's my pickup um it needs brakes and rotors and i decided i'm going to put slotted and drilled rotors on it and a little bit heavier duty brakes because the, the ones that are right now it's not, not good enough. Not when I'm pulling something. When I was doing some research on what I should get for my pickup, these kept coming up and being slotted and drilled. I those beautiful. Hopefully it keeps the temperature down when I'm braking hard, and that way the efficiency of my brake pads will stay intact and I'll have good braking in this thing. So we'll take off the stock rotors. I know they have a lot of life left on them, but I need the brakes. So I'm hoping this makes a good upgrade to the pickup because I didn't buy a three quarter ton like you guys said I should have. <sighs> Lesson learned. I'm interested to see what my brake pads actually are like. Um, I know there's a little pad left on them, but I think the upgrade's gonna be worth this. Oh, they were getting down. They're definitely a little less. So it wasn't a bad time to put new pads on for the least. I could probably sell these. They're still got a lot of life left on them. And they're not all destroyed because we don't have salt on our roads up here, but New ones are going to be better. Oh yeah, look at that thing, how shiny it is. I love it. I feel ashamed even taking off these pads. There's a lot of life left in them. They got quite a bit but they are shaped a little different than the new ones and uh I, i'm sure they're glazed a little bit they they're pretty polished which i suppose is normal but the main goal was to get the slotted and 
drilled rotors. But you might as well put new ones of these on too while you're at it. Almost forgot to put a little grease in this. I've been hearing a little bit of squeaking when I press the brakes and I think this thing's been needing some grease. That's better. Now what I should have done was clean these up and put a nice uh, high temp coat of red paint on it. That'd be cool. See that through the rims, but I didn't do that. So next project. my squeaking sound this side of the caliper is all seized up I need some grease I gotta try to break it loose this side moves in and out a little bit but that side is solid well that might be causing a little bit of problems glad I caught that see spend 700 bucks on brakes to find out that uh it's fused no it wasn't 700 bucks I don't remember. it was enough though okay I gotta get this out somehow I took the bolt out to at least get this whole half this caliper out, but that is fused in there. And that's my problem. I'm sure that was affecting my braking. There it goes. Oh yeah. Whoo. Yeah. That's not good. That shouldn't be like that. I'm gonna clean this up. I don't have a spare one, but I'll see what I can do. Well, it's nice and clean now. It's pitted from all the rust. Oh, I'm gonna get one of these on order. I don't know if I wanna put that one back in there. I might just for now, but uh, if I get a new one, I'll swap it out. It won't be too hard. But the question I have now is, how do I clean the inside of this out? I don't think I have a file or a wire or brush that's small enough to go in there and ream that out. So I might just have to pour a bunch of solvent in there and just kind of find something and work in it out and see if I can get some of that rust out of there. I should have soaked this thing overnight. What a deal. Well, that explains the squeak that I heard. I wonder how long it's been like that, probably since I bought it. Well, the back didn't look that bad. Um, the calipers were lubed up well enough. I went ahead and still put new grease on them. Uh, the brake pads though were down to about 30%. So they were, uh, they were due for a change. As you can see, I got the back axle chained up. If you're wondering why that is, it's because I put airbags in this thing and the airbag said in big letters, do not lift the truck from the frame without putting something to stop the axle from dropping. So stretch the bags. 
and I already forgot and lifted it once and stretched the bags a little bit. And I was like, oh, so I put it back down, put the chains on, lifted it back up. So yeah, buy a three quarter ton, Nick, buy a three quarter ton. It would have only been about $10,000 more, but buy a three quarter ton. Could have avoided all this. Though I do really like the 6.2 in this thing. It's a beast of an engine. I wish they put the 6.2 in a three quarter frame. That'd be money. Now they do have a 6.6 now, but my pockets aren't that deep to buy one of those. The 6.6 gas or so. And I know I could get a diesel, but my pockets aren't that deep right now for a diesel too. And man, they're worth like gold right now. So this is good. This is good. It'll get me by. I'm thankful to have it. It's a beautiful truck. done. I still got to go out and do the brake in procedure for the brakes. That's important. Definitely don't want to go take off down the road and uh, just start using the brakes like I normally would because, well, they won't set properly and I won't have a whole lot of brakes to begin with until they uh, seat to those new rotors. So with that said, um, videos are going to be kind of slow on and off for the next couple weeks. It's holidays. And like I said, we're all fighting sickness. So it's just a difficult time to make a lot of videos. It's just unfortunate, but we'll get to it. Don't worry. We'll be back in full force. There's a big butt that needs put back together. There's a bin that needs lifted. And there's a wagon that needs work done. And there's a lot of green that needs hauled. So yes, we'll be busy. You guys will see it all. But thanks for watching. God bless. And uh, you guys have a Merry Christmas. Take care.